Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. Welcome to Northern Powerhouse's business success story set of interviews. Today we have with us Matt Barrow, the CEO of XLab Systems. So, Matt, if you'd be kind enough to introduce yourselves to the audience. Uh, thanks, Chris. Hi. Uh, so, as you say, I'm Matt Barrow. I'm uh, Chief Executive at XLab. Uh, I've been at XLab now for about 18 months. Uh, we provide a, a diagnostic exchange for uh, laboratory testing of, uh, of, of samples. Um, historically, there was a, a very manual process for the, 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 manual, uh, the processing of, of test samples. Um, it was sent around with a test tube and a piece of paper. Uh, the, the system we provide uh, is a, a sort of a digital workflow that, that removes all that, um, all that need and allows all the systems to connect together. Uh, so over the last 10 years, really, but, but particularly the last year, that's become really critical as we've been part of the, the kind of the COVID response uh, in the UK. Well, so it sounds like you've been right in the middle of everything that's happened. So what, what are your experiences over the last sort of 10 months since going, I, I would imagine even before we, we went into lockdown, you were heavily involved. Uh, pre yeah. them, but what's been your experiences? It, it, I mean, it's been a really strange one um, in, in regard that, you know, at a, at a personal level, at a, a sort of family level, it's been, it's been really hard, obviously, as it has for everyone. Um, trying to manage the, you know, sort of three young kids around the house, not seeing grandparents and all these sorts of things yeah. has been, it's been tough. But professionally, it's been, it's been a really positive experience. Um, it's been a, a, a real opportunity for us to demonstrate the value of what we do and why we do it and how we do it. Uh, and particularly for, for all the people at XLAP, really, it's been a great opportunity to, to provide a, a real service and a real benefit to the NHS. Um, so we got involved in early March last year, March 2019. Uh, and uh, kind of in those early days, it was a case of look, what can we do? How can we help? We had a, a fairly well established network at that point. We were something like 75% of uh, English labs and close to 100% of Scottish labs had our, had our service. So yep. the expectation was we could do something, but we didn't know what really at that point. So in the early days, it was a case of working with the NHS, trying to understand what they wanted to do, how the response was going to look. And of course, you know, the senior leaders at the NHS were also trying to react to what was happening at a, at a government level, uh, what was happening internationally. So there was lots of, lots of reaction. Um, I guess at the same time, we were then in a situation where for an organization that's only ever been office based, you know, we didn't have any people working remotely. I think I was the only person with a laptop. Um, uh, it was a situation where, we were all trying to move from physical office to working from home, but we didn't have the infrastructure to do that. You know, there were people in taxis with desktop computers and, and monitors and keyboards and things. Uh, when people were going in and out of the office in those early days, it was it was just a nightmare. It was hard work. So we didn't have any of the like you know Teams or Zoom things that that seem absolutely normal now. Uh, we hadn't done any of that, and and all of our kind of all of our working was face to face. Whenever we went to see a client, it was a, a physical meeting with a client. We just didn't do anything, yep. anything remotely. So we had this sort of situation where our business was expanding, you know, really rapidly. So, you know, we're, we're probably close to a hundred times the, the, the volume through, probably more than actually maybe a thousand times the volume through the service today than we were this time last year. Um, at a time when we're trying to learn to work from home and, and you know, what Zoom, how do I do Zoom? Um, so it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it's been, it's been fascinating. I think that, Throughout that period, the, the the things kind of kept us going. Well, first, I guess the fact that we're doing good that that's kept us going. Yes. But also that that um, it's kept us it's kept us busy. We kept an open mind about what we're doing. We tried not to get too hung up over this is how we always do things or this is the right way to do things. It's just a case of well, let's let's see how it goes. And even this last this last few days with what's happened with the latest lockdown, um, yeah, nobody knew what was coming. Nobody knew what the what was going to what was going to happen, but it's a case of well, yeah, that's what it is now. Fine, we'll deal with that and we'll move on and and, and deal with it. Incredible! I've just uh, just trying to put this out. So I've heard so flow of bit work has increased a thousand times. Something like that. And, yeah. and you've had to go from office based, desktop based to, to not at the same point. Yeah, and also and you're still alive. That's incredible. Yeah. We've, uh, so we had to. And we've made a lot of changes to the business in the last year. So, so when I so when I joined, um, it was a it was a great company and full of some really really smart people um, and lovely people actually. It's, it's a it's a it's a great community. 
but it had been almost like a almost like a social endeavor for for the for the life of the business so far. So it was it wasn't really a commercial enterprise. It wasn't really about um, it wasn't scaled to deal with that enterprise grade expectation. So all of the things that we had to to think about over the last year, like you know, kind of security, resilience, uh, even like we had to move to the cloud because the the sorts of demand that the the program was going to put on us just wouldn't be appropriate for the for the service we had before. Yep. Um, so we're trying to kind of, it's almost like that that you know people talk about change the wheels on the bus while while the bus is still moving, but for us we're really kind of you know trying to add wings to a plane while the while the plane's still flying. Um, we had to it, well we've hired a, almost a whole new management team. The, the existing management team is still there, but we filled in the gaps around sort of the chief yep. technology officer, product officers, and so on. Um, and then at the same time, of course, you know, the phone starts ringing from you know, Saudi Arabia and Canada and, and America to say, we've heard about this thing you've done in the UK. Can, can you help us with that over here? So you got the, uh, you know, the, our, our head of sales and business development is getting super excited about all these overseas opportunities. Um, and the, the poor technology officers, you know, dealing with the fact that we, well, we're doing this thousand times expansion of the, the service in the UK. Um, and then Steve, the biz dev guy, is like, "Well, we can we can double that, we can triple that, we can do uh, we can do ten thousand times as much." So balancing these kind of th these different pressures has been has been has been quite hard. And yeah, you know, my my part in this has been has been much more around, so I guess, sort of taking care of the team, making sure that yep. everybody's um, everybody feels supported. You know, in the early days, that was down to you know, making sure people had desks or, or chairs or uh, or keyboards and things, things they they needed. Um, and then it, it, the things you miss in the office when you're there and around people and you can see that, you know, Dave's a bit quiet today. I wonder what's, uh, what's wrong or you know, seems, seems a, bit, a bit different to normal. You don't have those kind of non-visual cues when you're out of the office. You don't, you, you can't pick up on that. And you miss a lot of it when we're on these sorts of the, these Zoom calls. You miss the general, the, you know, the banter, the, the chat around the, the office, the, the other stuff that goes on. And it's hard to work out, you know, who actually is struggling, who's having a hard time, who needs a bit more support. Um, and, and so you, you you almost have to like dial that up and, and be sort of super attuned to that and, and super aware of that. And I think that's what's really been that's what's really been my focus. You know, the, the team are, are excellent at doing their jobs. Uh, I, I don't need me to tell them how to do that. Yeah. Um, my my job then is to is to make sure that they're well and, and they're they're taken care of. Incredible. I mean, just I just trying to imagine the scale of this 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 challenge that you've had to overcome. And and I agree. I mean, I I think you know the phrase you can't you can't not communicate. So being in an office with people, you're communicating even if you say that. So replacing that. So a lot of people we've spoken to have had the, you know, uh, well, or many have had the challenge of reduction in work, but actually keeping people engaged socially. What, what, what have been the key things where, uh, for your perspective of, in, you know, massive increase of work and change, what, what are some of the adapt, adaptations, things that you've done differently or that you've learned to do as a result of this? I think that the big thing is when everybody's working from home, um, I mean, it's, it's a bit easier for me because I have, I have an office. I can come in the office and I sort of, I'm in the office, I'll work. And if I'm not in the office, I'll try not to work. But for a lot of people, a lot of us, uh, our staff are quite young. They're, they're kind of you know, recent graduates. Uh, they may be living in a, in a shared house or, or they have some of them live with their parents still. Yeah. So they've they got the laptop or the computer set up in the bedroom. Um, and it's therefore very easy for them to just keep working all the time and, and to not switch off. So the, the thing we're having to be really, really strict with now is to, is to, to see there's an end of the day, you know, that this is when your day stops. And actually it's okay not to not to keep working. And if an email comes in in the evening, that's fine. You know, don't worry about it. You don't have to answer it. I think in the in the early days of the course, my kids used to jump at me uh, and, and sort of say, well, why do you keep saying everyone for go for a walk? What what are you what are you doing? You're not, you're not trying to manage the business. But it was about that kind of making sure that people take a break and, and stay effective. In the in the sort of the month before Christmas, because again, you know, in summer it's easy to go for a walk and, and to get some time off or go and sit in the garden. Um, as we got through to through to winter, we were finding that people were just working longer and longer. Um, and again, yeah. it gets dark at three o'clock in the evening or three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it doesn't really matter whether you finish at five or seven; it's all yeah. the same. Um, yeah. So we ended up introducing a, um, a virtual commute. Uh, Lucy, one of the one of the managers in the team, came up with this idea of the virtual commute. And so we had a, a, a challenge set up on Strava, and every day everybody kind of logged their morning and evening commutes. Um, and at the end of the month, we, we we set some mileage challenges, and what we wanted to do was to to donate amount of money to um, to some kind of mental health charities on the basis of how, how far people walked. Um, one of the guys, Mike Holmes, donated a, a match the first thousand pound himself as a, as a sort of personal donation, which was which was fantastic. Um, and then it, it was a 
we had a number of prizes on top of that. So things like you know, the, the longest commute, uh, the, the, I think it was the craziest commute. We had one person do the commute on their hands and hands and knees. They were one, one person did a handstand for the whole commute. Um, so it's just sort of different things uh, to, to try and make it a bit more interesting. And, and those, those were the, again, you know, trying to motivate people to work hasn't been a challenge. You know, everybody's driven and, and hardworking. Um, trying to motivate people to, to stop working, to have a break when it's needed, to, to kind yeah. of get the time out. That's where it's been really hard because it's just it's just too easy to sit at the desk for six hours and, and not and not stand up. Yeah, so t- totally agree. It it, uh, it 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 really is diff- difficult not to disengage when it's so close to you. So so I, I'm, I'm keen to. I mean, we talked about this massive growth. What 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 are the wins that that you've seen over over the last year? Uh, the the wins, sorry. Yeah, what would you say are key achievements? Um, so I guess the the big thing was. Being part of this national program, so back in the in the early days, um, the the announcement by the NHS that we were going to be mandated as a as a service across the NHS uh, as the the National Pathology Exchange or MPEX. Um, but what's been particularly, I guess, particularly rewarding for me to look and, and to see how the team have achieved this is that we've been able to keep up with the with the really big players. So that there are other parts of the the business. Obviously, the NHS are a huge organisation themselves. Um, we have the likes of Deloitte and Kanos, who are big organisations uh, uh, as part of, the, part of the process, and Randox and others. And we're, you know, we're very small. We at the start of the process, we're about twenty people. We're about fifty-ish people now. Uh, we've grown a lot during that during that period, and yeah. a lot. Um, but but we've been able to we've been able to keep pace. And and what's been what's been great is that you know a lot of the sort of public problems that have been have been visible. None of them no, touch wood so far. None of them have been have been asked. Um, so that's a. Uh, that's probably the big win, actually, is to is to just fly on the radio, to not be in the news, to not be the the the, the suppliers that people are talking about. Um, and and we've, we've largely gone unnoticed just by doing a good job and and, and keeping up our side of the bargain. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I, I'm just trying to think of you know you've obviously had to change quite a lot, and yeah. and um, p- partially because of the growth, I would imagine, and partially because of the. Um, you know the change of circumstances in lockdown. What 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 changes will you keep doing once we get back to whatever new normal looks like and whenever that is? Well, the the really exciting thing for us has been this um, the geographic diversity we've been able to introduce. So, you know, historically, I guess you had a view that you either you did things on site or you did things you could offshore yes. or, or outsource things, um, and and that's now a much more a much more granular model. You know, we're not in that space anymore. So. Um, you know, one of the first things we did in the early days of the uh, of the, the kind of we, we're a Leeds-based firm, sorry. Uh, so we started Leeds, but we yep. started my people from elsewhere. So we have now we have a couple of people in the US. Uh, we've got um, a couple of people in Australia. Uh, we've got some people in in London and other places. And it just you, you just remove those boundaries. So you're now not in a situation where you're having to hire from you know what was a fairly competitive market in and around the, the Leeds area with the, you know, some of the big organisations we have here. Um, but we can look for, for other places. You know, we have people from Bristol or Cornwall or wherever else. And it, it's become, I, I think it's become a real leveller uh, in, in, in terms of that, particularly for us as a you know, in, you know, northern powerhouse and what that means for us. It doesn't now matter. If you're dealing with an organisation in San Francisco, it doesn't matter whether you're in London or in Leeds or York or wherever we are now. Um, it's, it's nice to be in that, in that situation. It's just now about the, the quality of what you do and how you do it. Um, for, for individual recruits, has been has been great. It's been hard in some regard, to, and, and sorry, the, the point about geographic diversity there was that when we talk about diversity, generally people think about race or age or, or sex and so on. But but there's a there's a whole thing around people from different areas of the country acting differently, thinking differently, having different uh, experiences. Um, and when you start to bring in these people from from different areas, they do think about things in a different way. They do think about the, the logistics of things and the, the way that things might work uh, in a in a different uh, different way. And that's been really exciting. We, we've seen different things there in, in how that, that works. We've also been able to, to massively open up our pool of people we can recruit from. Um, and so, you know, old colleagues and contacts of mine who, I, who I'd love to work with again, but when we were office-based, wouldn't really have been logistically viable. Now that's that's fine. That works really well. So we, we've hired some people that um, I'm really excited to have on board again, uh, which, is, which has been brilliant. Um, we've been talking to some other people, as I say, overseas, and that's been that's been great as well. So... So that's been that's been a real positive uh, from all this. And I think it's, whilst it's very easy to look at all the negatives, there are still a lot of positives we can we can see. Um, and and I think the the opportunity we have right now to to do things overseas, particularly and, and the growth overseas that we we see in the years ahead, 
it's it's yeah, it's great for us. It's a it's a brilliant, exciting place to be, and I and I, and I sort of hope that we can start to to make to make more of a name for X Club internationally over the next maybe year to two years. Wonderful, uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Um, and and what what obviously we've just today got into a, a, another lockdown. What, what what impact, if any, is that going to have on you? Uh, so the, the biggest impact as we've had so far is trying to get yeah. people working. Um, <laughs> so with, uh, yeah, with, with uh, one child watching Peppa Pig on Netflix and then there are two more uh, doing the, the sort of homeschooling on, uh, on laptops and things and my wife working in the other room as well. That, that's the biggest challenge is, is yeah. just broadband. I think for the most part, um, like, like last year, the March last year, that was, that was the tough time so that we had the big change. Uh, we had the um, we were doing the, the rapid rollout of all of our services as well. So we had, I think it was forty one sites we deployed to in three weeks. Um, so there was a, a crazy period of time. In, in some regard, now it's it's almost like well it's easy now we've we've done this. You know it's, it's not like not that much different. It's a bit frustrating um, to be to be back inside, but you know absolutely respect why it's been done and and, and completely agree that it is needed. Um, and um, one of our partners in this whole process, I mean, obviously we work a lot with the NHS, but uh, we, we've had a partnership with the Cordelia and Huddersfield Foundation Trust for, uh, for, for many years um, and, and seeing the experience that they've had over the last couple of months and how hard they have to work just in terms of managing the volume of patients that are coming through, yeah. managing vaccines and so on. Um, you know, it, it's very real just how, how, how much the NHS is under pressure at the moment. So, you know, when we complain about the internet's not quite fast enough or, you know, it's a bit cold in this room or something, yeah, the reality is it's so much harder for the for the frontline workers that we can't really complain about it not honestly no no it's a very it, it it's good not good sorry it's it's uh, sobering i guess to hear that because you rightly say we're, it's easy to moan a little bit about not being able to do this or that but um we're not having to deal with with lots of illness you know with lots of sick patients to capacity as, as, as you know in in the conditions i know they're dealing with that I, I visited, a, unfortunately, a, a sick friend quite a while ago. Um, he'd, he'd had a, um, uh, it's, it's not important, but, but having, just having to put the PPA on myself to go and visit him in hospital was a challenge. And that was once, not every day, every every shift, every, um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly could understand and uh, I think what you're saying is bang on. Yeah, we had a, we had a flight recently and, and we had to, um, sort of seven hour flight, I had to wear the, the mask for the whole plane. And that was that was arduous, you know, going through the airport and 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 by about three hours of the plane, you're thinking, oh, it's really like it's itching on the back of my ears, it's not very nice. And you have to take it on and off every time you're eating or drinking. And and then, you know, at some point you think, actually, is it really that bad? You know, I've sort of sat sat on a plane, gone on holiday. I can't really moan about having to wear a mask. It's not, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, I, I think the the reality is um you know, kind of work carries on as normal for us. It's not really any different. Uh, we just we just keep going. Um, and, and in some regard, I think it, it gives us a little bit of respite. So where we've had, the volume's been going up uh, fairly steadily throughout last year with, with testing. There was going to be a big impact of what happened with secondary school testing uh, and the volume's coming through from that. So uh, the fact that that's now potentially been pushed back by six or seven weeks buys us a little bit more time. Um, yeah. We can, I think we can start to engineer the approach we take for that, uh, for that ramp up in a, in a slightly better way. So again as, as with everything we've had over the last year it's it's, it's about looking for the opportunities looking at how we can turn what what's happening into a positive um and there definitely are positives in all of this that, that we see now yeah yeah i i, I just wonderful I, I, I guess one question would be relevant is is what what you know what are your main challenges moving forwards um the, the big the big one we've had so far is is trying to move too quickly, trying to do too many two yeah. things too quickly, and, and as, as you say, you're trying to trying to go through a major organisational change, which we did, uh, and, and effectively move offices, but to move to forty offices and recruit a lot of people and grow the business and move internationally and replatform the technology as well. Yeah, each one of those things. You know, normally when I, you know, I used to be a consultant, and you, you might advise one or two of those at a time in, in parallel, you'd never advise doing all five or six of them at the same time. Um, that's probably been the biggest challenge for us. But but there's and, and remaining positive through it and, and keeping that motivation for the, for the staff uh, that, that, that we can we can do this stuff. Um, I think that when you look back at some of these things though, that there is a that strong point you can say, well, you know, that, that thing seems really hard, but look what you did last year, look how we scaled. If we said at the beginning of last year, in this year, we're gonna scale up by a thousand times and we're gonna to deploy to 50% more sites or 100% more sites, I think it was in the end. Um, and we're gonna expand the team 
threefold. Yeah, I would have been laughed out the room. It would have been a ridiculous thing, but we did that stuff. So what we're looking at now going forward, actually, yeah, is it is it really that hard? If you want to say you want to be in five countries by the end of this year, well, yep. fine. That doesn't seem that bad now. So I'm not, I'm not too worried particularly about the the, the the challenges. I think getting getting through the next the next few months, keeping the service running, uh, making sure that we're able to to scale. Um, yeah, that's our primary concern. Keeping the NHS running is the primary concern. Yeah. Then we look at that international opportunity and. Um, and moving much more to a to a business as usual activity as well, and, and I guess then it comes a case of what happens as, as the as coronavirus starts to go away. You know, for with this weird situation where it's like almost a, a reverse recession for us, where it's been yes, it's been great because of coronavirus, and then as it starts to go away again, um, yeah. obviously our revenues drop uh, and and the, and the business the business drops back, but we have to look at the the, the benefits that come from that. So what have we done? Uh, what can we do during this period? To really establish ourselves uh, as a leader in the space, uh, how can we make the most of, of what's happened, and, uh, and 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 how can we then kind of capitalise on that awareness that now exists in the marketplace uh, about the importance of testing and and integrated testing and, and how that speed really helps. Great, absolutely brilliant. Well, it 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 sounds like incredibly exciting times to come, and I can see that you know as you say that that reverse um, re reverse recession being an interesting challenge and and thing to 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 work on. So, so obviously, the, the, I guess the good news that we have had along with the challenging news is, is with testing um, and, and with the vaccine, we, we, we can see a, an end to this. So what, what on a both personal and professional level do you, are you most looking forward to when we get whatever new normal looks like in, at some point? Uh, I, I don't know. I think, um, I think family is probably the thing that I miss the most uh, during this bit of time and just being able to like it's weird you watch TV programs and I know I find myself now um yeah you watch some watch the TV programs they go well that's sounding a bit close together now that's not two meters and oh well, he's he's in a bar he's not wearing a mask that's not that's not great um and you think I'm watching we're watching Top Gun over Christmas um I think like, well, that doesn't seem very safe at all uh so it's it's, it's bizarre I don't know that our mindset will ever really change fully back I think we've got some years ahead of us um I mean my expectation and I have traveled a bit this year with work and, and other things and, and, and education, um, or last year, sorry. As we've been doing that, it, it becomes a, a bit more, like the testing that goes on, we, I got tested before I went away, they got tested when I was through the airport, tested again, uh, like as you go into restaurants and things while, while you're away. I think that will become much more of the, the, the phase we get into. And actually, I think we can live with that. You know, wearing masks in public for the next few years uh, is not the end yeah. of the world, it's not that big a deal. Um, if we can get tested before we travel, that'd be great. Probably actually skiing might be the thing I'm looking forward to most. Um, I've really missed that over the last couple of years. Um, and, and it is something I, I, I do really enjoy. So hopefully we can get back to that maybe next year or the year after. You, you and me both. Where, where, where's your favourite place? Um, well, we, we, we've we been to Austria quite a few times. But we're, we're actually just just about to cancel the trip to Canada. It's my 40th birthday in a few weeks. Um, and we're supposed to be going to Canada for that. So uh, that's, no, that's no off, sadly. Um, oh. But... Um, but I think instead I might just you know, have a walk around the garden or something. That might be uh, might be all I can do that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it's fascinating just to, just to think about what it's been like. And I agree with you about you know I think change behaviours is it, you know there are change behaviours. It's funny one of my friends he he had not he has a set of under, underlying health problems, not massive, but but enough that. He, you know, what one thing he always does is he doesn't want to catch anything. So he, he's been sanitizing for years. And he was just saying, you know, I, I've just sanitized, you know, he, he naturally gets on the plane, he sanitizes. And and the, and the funny thing was, to some extent, he said, well, I've sanitized for years and I don't get sick. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's just that fundamental hygiene, I guess, that, that we, we haven't, you know, implemented well enough. And if we can learn something from it and take that through, I think, you know, we're going to be a healthier country in general, which would be interesting. Um, so, so I guess it, I've just been absolutely fascinated by it. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to know with everything that's happened to you in the business, what you've learned about yourself. Um, <laughs> I think, so I was, doing a, I was doing an MBA alongside this as well, uh, uh, an accelerated MBA. Um, <laughs> just just because when I when I when I started with XLab, I, I um, it was only going to be part time and I was sort of a, uh, three days a week, and I was going to do the, the MBA two days a week. Um, <laughs> that didn't really work out so well. I've kept going with the MBA and I, and I finished that at Christmas. What I really learned was was just kind of how far I can stretch myself and how how, yeah. how far I can I can push. Um, I think the, that was that was really 
that was really tough for me uh, towards the end of last year with everything that's going on with the business, everything that's going on with the MBA and, and all, the, all the assignments and things. Um, just understanding what those limits are and, and, and almost sort of setting a new high tide mark. Um, but then, you know, so, as I was saying before, in terms of motivating the staff, you know how far you can push people and how far um, yeah, you can kind of say, well, look, you've done this before, you can do this, you can, you know, you can, you can encourage them that way. I can do the same to myself now. I can sort of say, well, look, this thing isn't as bad as that thing over there and that thing wasn't as bad as this thing. And none of it's as bad as last November. So uh, let's not worry about it now. And I think in some regard, I've come back from Christmas, you know, refreshed and relaxed and, and, and ready to go again. Sort of confident now that having set that new high tide mark last year, um, I, can, I can push myself a bit harder than I have done before maybe this year. So. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. An MBA in the middle of all this with everything you do, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So, I, I, Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure to and I really thank you because I think you, you, there's been some sobering things you've said as well about how hard everyone is working, including, you know, including especially your team, but, you know, as, as the bigger team of the NHS. Yeah. Are, are, are there any last thoughts that you have about, you know, what's happened in the last year in, you know, just, just in hindsight? I guess the, the one the one thing was I, mean, I, I speak to quite a lot of other business leaders and a lot of other people. The, the one thing that I've noticed about all the companies that have been successful um, through the last 12 to 18 months is is the agility. Um, yeah, companies that can can adapt uh, and, and understand. I think people who are who are really fixated in the things they do have struggled. And even down to I mean, we have a, a local pub here uh, who have switched to doing uh, deliveries for the for the Sunday roasts. Um, and, and now it's, it's getting hard to get a slot to get a delivery because it's, uh, they're so busy with these with some of the roasts. Um, I mean, even I saw in the paper the weekend with BrewDog offering their, their services to, to be vaccination centres where they're, they're closest to pubs. Uh, that's what makes a difference. I think people that are able to look at this and say, well, look, you know, I can't do what I did before. How can I do something different? How can I make the most of this opportunity? Um, and, and not kind of wallowing in, well, this bad yeah. stuff's okay, but really just cracking on with the opportunity. That... That's one thing I've seen, and not necessarily a, you know, advice. I don't know that I'm the right person to give advice to anyone, but certainly from what I've seen from, from success stories elsewhere, uh, it has been that adaptability. That, that's what's made the difference for people. Um, and keeping that at the, at the forefront um, of, of people's minds is one of the most important thing. Yeah, I, I, w w one of my favourite quotes at the moment was um, I picked up recently from Charles Darwin, go back such a long period of time, but from The Origin of Species, which it's not the strongest or most intelligent of the species that survive, but the ones that are most adaptable to change. And it, it, you know, that's that's you know that, that's it in a nutshell. I think, isn't it? It's so um, we. I mean, we've seen we've worked with different businesses, but we you know a, a business in York that's a cheese cheese and wine retailer with a with a caf, with a restaurant cafe that had to shut, um, and they've gone online and done cheese and wine tastings um, for, for for people in lockdown that turned into actually lots of young couples struggle you know that they have friends they can't see very often because they've all got young children and being able to meet on a Saturday night and have a, a cheese and wine taste that's all delivered to you is uh, is great but you know th that's one choice other business similar businesses are shut down um so thank you well, well, well look that, that that's been absolutely fascinating and um I, I I could talk to you for hours about what you, you've experienced and what you've achieved um and, but I want to thank you for, for every, obviously all the work you're doing for, for the country and, and also hopefully for the message to people that, you know, that there are ways through that and growth growth can and does happen even in the most challenging of times. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for watching. What was your takeaway from today's interview? Please post it in the comments below and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.